Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Uh, we're now moving back in history to share with you some things that happened today, the 26th of February, uh, way back. I'm going to the year 2012. This, um, I, what I'm talking about this morning, is one of the most uh, famous events in U.S. history with regards um, um, riots and uh, racial injustice and police brutality. It is uh, on this day that the uh, young boy, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, was uh, fatally shot in Sanford, Florida by George Zimmerman. Um, he was visiting his father, or we, he and his father were visiting his uh, father's fiance um, in Florida at that time. And uh, Trayvon had gone for a walk uh, to the supermarket to you know, buy a little you know, items. Um, on his way back, George Zimmerman, who was a member of the local vigilante then, spotted him, called the police, and you know, while they were still on the phone you know, talking to George Zimmerman, he followed Trevor Martin. An altercation you know, happened, and then, of course, uh, Trayvon was shot. Um, this eventually led to uh, more than 2 million um, online petitions signed to ensure that there was a trial, because at first, uh, George Zimmerman wasn't arrested. Uh, the police didn't fi find any need to arrest him at that time. Eventually, he uh, went to court and, you know, was found not guilty of a second-degree uh, murder. This event, for everyone who has heard about Black Lives Matter, the hashtag, the group, everything has to do with it, all started because of the death of Trayvon Martin. And it was um, a combination of, of, you know, and of course, a, a built-up anger from the death of numerous, numerous persons in the United States, blacks mostly, who have been racially profiled and have been ra racially, um, um, well, profiled and, you know, and killed sometimes. Um, if you remember a white left singing about Amadou Diallo, that happened in 1999. And there was um, Rodney King, that happened in 1991. Michael Brown, 2014. Alton Sterling and uh, Philando Castile in 2016. Trevor Martin, which I just spoke about. Oscar Grant. In California in 2009, um, Eric Garner 2014, Tamir Rice 2014 also, Freddie Gray 2015, and then of course the most popular one of recent times, George Floyd sometime last year in Minneapolis. Um, but Trayvon Martin's um, case and riots uh, was really what started the Black Lives Matter um, movement and created one of the biggest conversations on um, 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 injustice and pr police brutality in the U.S. and racial segregation, racial injustice, racial profiling generally in the United States. Uh, till date, uh, Judge Zimmerman has not been found guilty of his murder because, of course, uh, the jury of six women at that time didn't think that there was enough evidence to find him guilty of a, a manslaughter or of murder. Um, it also um, was a uh, time when conversations about what exactly a charge should be at a situ in a situation like that should, you know, um, second degree murder, first degree murder, manslaughter, some of all of that. And then also the stand your ground law in Florida was also uh, spoken about a lot then. Mm -hmm. It was legal. It was one of the laws in Florida that you can, you know, take up you know, arms and defend yourself if you feel threatened. You don't need to you know, run away from a threat. You can, you know, if someone is in your space, defend yourself. And so some of all those things came up in part of the conversation. Uh, but most importantly was the conversation about the um, value of black lives in the United States, um, black and brown lives in the United States, and uh, police brutality, racial, racial profiling, and all of that. So it was on this day, Trayvon Martin was killed. I mean... This story just brings back all the negative memories of racial discrimination, injustice, and you can't still talk about things like this without bringing it home to Nigeria with the NSAS protest, even though there was nothing racist about it. But this was somebody else in a position of power who was armed with a gun who shot a 17-year-old boy. I mean, the news described him as a wannabe cop. He was a member of the, yes, local, vigilante. the local vigilante. He said he saw a young man wearing a dark hoodie walking around the neighborhood, and he was following him. He called 911. 911 asked him not to follow him, yeah, but he went there, around there, followed him. There's still you know, audio clips of that phone call online. Followed him and fatally shot him. There's so many sides to the story. Some people say, you know, why was Trayvon Martin at that point? But the story say that Trayvon Martin had gone to visit his father's fiance. They lived in that neighborhood. Yes. He had gone to buy iced tea, was going back home. He was even on the phone with his girlfriend. He even told his girlfriend that somebody was following him. At the end of the day, Trayvon Martin was shot by Zimmerman. Other people say 
Trayvon Martin attacked Zimmerman and people are trying to spin the story around to seem like a racist murder. But we never really would know the fact of the case. But the Stand Your Grant law has made people like Zimmerman, you know, get free on murder, murder charges because they say if you feel threatened, you yes. can just put out the gun and shoot someone. Unfortunately, the only person who survived to tell the, you know, the story was Zimmerman. George Zimmerman. Yes. You know, no other person, you know, had, you know, enough evidence or had seen what had happened. Um, the, you know, amount of evidence that was on the scene didn't also show a lot, you know, that, you know, supported um, uh, the case for the prosecutors. And that, that is the uh, Trevor Martin side. Okay. Um, and also, you know, like you said, you know, brings it down here to Nigeria and what we've also had to deal with in the United States, as much as 98 or 99 percent of these cases um, don't eventually find the policemen guilty. Indeed. Um, so there is that system. Something, something I wanted to quickly mention was um, to, looking back at this very event, we saw 911, they got calls, and they got about 14 calls in just a few minutes that that sh you know, shooting occurred. 14 calls, people in the neighborhood. Meaning they had an efficient system where if you see something in your neighborhood, you can, you can simply call, call the police, they send a dispatch, and there's help on the way. So but here, the, things happen. Who can you even call to, to come to your RRS. aid? The, what's the RRS's number? Good question. Let's move on to our next topic <laughs> issue on today in history. We're, we're going back to the year 1993, February 26 this year. Well, in 1973, the World Trade Center opened. And uh, just about 20 years later after it opened, uh, you know, the, the World Trade Center was bombed by a terrorist group of about five men. It was the tallest building in the world at that time. And uh, we saw that these five terrorists, they, 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 did an, they built an improvised bomb, planted it in a truck, and drove the truck to the garage of the World Trade Center. During interviews with the terrorist interrogations, they mentioned that the truck bombing was motivated by U.S. foreign policy and U.S. support for Israel against Palestine. The World Trade Center was a twin tower of 110 floors. And uh, the damage to the World Trade Center when that uh, bomb exploded, it was $500 million. Authorities evacuated about 50,000 people from the World Trade Center. Uh, just about 2,000 people, uh, just about six people died, including a pregnant woman. And evacuation from that World Trade Center lasted for like, the whole afternoon. You know, they eventually uh, found four of the five terrorists in March 1994. They were convicted for their role in the bombing and they were each sentenced to life in prison. But the mastermind of the attack, his name was Ramis Ahmed Youssef. He remained at large until February 1995 when he was arrested in Pakistan. And uh, in 1997, Youssef was convicted and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. During an investigation, the mastermind of this attack, Youssef said, his regret, his only regret was that they had planned for the truck bomb to explode in the garage of the North Tower and collapse onto the South Tower and kill about 250,000 people. So mm -hmm. he said his only regret was that that didn't happen. It just you know, affected parts of the Northern Tower. It didn't affect the Southern Tower. And just about six people died. Well, eventually, um, they were somehow su more successful in uh, 2001. Yes, we know about um, that. But the thing the, is, the, 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 the FBI said they've not been able to find a link between the two attacks, even though they, they just might be. But they've not been able to find a link between the World Trade Center bombing of 1993 and the attack. You know, they hijacked four airliners, collapsed or crashed to into the World Trade Center. The, the, the idea at, um, started, you know, uh, in, with this event in 1993. There's also been a bombing at um, U.S. Um, um, aircraft carrier, USS something, I don't remember its name now, um, that was also linked to Al Qaeda. But these are just, you know, s similar, you know, events. Yes, and uh, conspiracy yes. theorists would also say some things that I wouldn't mention about these <laughs> attacks. And I would also mention, just before we go, the RRS number in Lagos is 112 or 767. All right, so How many just Nigerians in case, know that? Yeah, so well, that's, that's, it's important that's what people what, know. You see, let's not even go back to that conversation because they have a lot to do in educating Nigerians on you know, emergency response. What numbers do you call? And when you call them, do they really show up? So these are things that we all need to consider. Really. Absolutely. So oh, yesterday in history, 1993, February 26th, the World Trade Center was bombed by an improvised truck. And of course, in the year 2012, 2012 Trevor Martin was killed. Yes, so that's it for today in history. We'll take a break, return and talk 
business and politics.